Hi, welcome to St. Thomas More Catholic Church in Cottonwood Heights, Utah. I'm Father John Evans, the pastor here, and today I want to share with you how I'm live streaming our Mass, funerals, baptisms, and other liturgical um, celebrations. When the pandemic hit, our good bishop asked all of our priests to begin live streaming their Masses so that we could reach the people at home, the people remotely, um, as our churches were, were closed and there were no people in the pews during Mass. It was just me all alone. And as it was for many of you, and what I want to show you today is some of the basics, how I started and how I went through um, creating our live streams. And over time, over the last five months, incrementally I've made some improvements along the way. So this uh, video will probably take about 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. Hang in there. There's a lot of really good information. It may save you a lot of trouble, a lot of time, pulling your hair out, and even some money. Let me start with showing you the basic setup of the equipment we're using. I chose Sling Studios because they are um, a wireless solution for their camera work. Um, and that's what I was looking for. So let me show you what we have here. So on a little media stand here, I have the hub, this little tower here. And this hub is um, connecting all of our cameras using Wi-Fi. It also has a battery attached to it, so it doesn't need to be plugged in. We keep it plugged in for stability and so that we um, don't have to worry about the battery, but um, it does come with a battery that we got. It also, we also have this iPad, and with this iPad, I have four camera views. I have three set cameras in the church, and I have one at the bottom right here, which is displayed, and it's the cell phone. It's my cell phone that I'm using to um, show you this equipment. And then uh, there's another image up here of what's being preloaded, or you can switch it over to uh, the audio levels. And you'll notice on here that I have all of my camera audio levels turned off. And I only have one audio level, and it's my audio in. I have a cable coming from my main sound system in the church coming into the hub. And that main audio feed is feeding the whole live stream. So the, the microphone at my Ambo, my lavalier microphones, handheld microphones, the choir microphones, any of the sound that we normally have in our church is feeding into this hub and out to the internet on the live stream. And by doing that, all of my sound is synchronized. There's no delays, there's no echo, there's no added reverb. Because if you have these different cameras, um, microphone on, then you get multiple audio inputs and there can be delays and um, little issues that you would need to work out. By muting them all and using the house system, I get the purest level of sound and it's all synchronized and everything is good. In addition to this equipment, on the next shelf below, I have a hard drive, external hard drive to store video. Um, the live feed that goes out, I also have an option over here in addition to simultaneously or optionally um, record to that hard disk and it provides me with a backup. It's also if you want to not do live stream and you just want to record some video and do post-production work on it, it's a great, great solution for that. Um, down there I also have additional batteries for the cameras that are on the chargers. Um, if we ever need them, we don't really use them, but if the power were ever to go out, we'd have the batteries, um, extra batteries going. So it's a pretty basic setup. You take this hub, and connect it to your cameras and make sure that you get your your church audio system feeding into it and you'll have the best audio possible. As we look across the church in the very first pew I have three cameras set up. One at the far end does a wide-angle view. 
the one in the middle, and it's as close to the middle as I, get, I can get in keeping it in the pew, is focused on the altar. And the camera in the foreground here, the closest one to us, is focused on the ambo. And these three camera angles provide quite a bit of variety. Let me show you how they're set up. Looking at this camera, what you'll see here is this little box on top. And this box is what's called a Sling Studio camera link. It is what connects this camera using Wi-Fi in here out to the hub I showed you. And it allows just about any camcorder made in the last 10, 15 years, um, they're able to connect using this with Wi-Fi. So you're not having to run hard cables on the ground from this camera back to the hub that's going out to the internet. So not only is this a Wi-Fi unit, it is a battery. Now, I have a battery here for the Wi-Fi. I have a battery here for the camera. But I plug both of these in to uh, an extension cord to have stability so that we never run out of battery in the middle of a, a liturgical celebration. And it's, if the power were to ever go out, these two batteries would kick in immediately and we would have no downtime. And this is really handy. So with a simple HDMI cable connecting the camera to the camera link, off it goes. A little bit of power right here and a little bit of power right here gets us um, a steady stability. So I have all three of my cameras that, are, that I use for daily mass and all the, all the celebrations set up with a simple power strip and extension cord to give it steady power. The other thing I really want to talk about with these cameras is that I have them all in the front row. It wasn't that way originally. I had one camera set up dead center in the middle aisle, focused at the altar, so when I'm presiding you get a straight view and not some weird angle. And um, this proved to be a very costly mistake. We dropped a camera on the ground off the tripod. The tripod got knocked over. It was a $600 um, mistake and it destroyed the camera. So I decided to get the, the cameras into the front row to protect them from getting knocked over but also it was um, it was really um, very good as well because it allowed me to open up the front of the sanctuary more so when we have funerals you can see a little more. I'll show you that in a minute but with these cameras that we have, you want to make sure that you get um, your tripod with a telescopic um, uh, adjustment on it, meaning the camera can be raised up. The higher, the better. And the reason is, is in, the, in front of our sanctuaries in Catholic churches, they tend to be much lower than the altar and the ambo level. And this helps, um, this, this telescopic adjustment helps to get a more leveled view. Now, you don't have to always be leveled, um, but it really helps. So this camera that's focused on the AMBO, I really do want it to be more level because um, for a secondary shot, I'll show you later, it looks beyond the AMBO back to the presider's chair. Now, what happens if you don't have three cameras? If you're just starting out, you can, you can begin very simply. This is how I started. I, made, I got a Facebook um, page um, for our parish, and I started live streaming just using my cell phone, the very cell phone that we're using to look at it right now. And you can see I look very small in the image, but there's a reason for that. Um, it'd be nice if we could be zoomed in more, but I'm getting the scope of not just the altar, but these credence tables on the two sides, plus I'm getting the view of the ammo. And so if I get an ammo and an altar together, I can still do this all by myself. In the early days of the pandemic, there was nobody to ask but me. I didn't have somebody to zoom a camera. And it's very hard to zoom a cell phone camera during, you know, while you're streaming live. 
So if you, if you need a simple setup, this will work. Um, of course, I'm typing the audio for my lavalier mic right here that I have on um, into the house system, into our live stream that you're hearing now. The audio from the phone is silent, it's on mute. Now, you, if you're just doing the simple setup, you're going to have to unmute that phone, obviously, and just use it. If you still don't feel you have enough audio, and I didn't, I was using our day chapel. What I did is I got a PA speaker, just a big speaker, and I put it right under the tripod where the cell phone was being held. In fact, in the very beginning, it was just clipped to a music stand. But I put the, the speaker right under it, and I took my lavalier mic and plugged it into that speaker. And as I spoke, I pumped a lot of volume straight up at the phone. It worked beautifully. It was sufficient. That's how you can get a whole lot more audio with a simple cell phone. Unless you can wire directly into that cell phone, which would be even better, you just put a speaker by it and uh, hook up your cordless microphone to that speaker plug a mixer in if you have to. Um, I have a special PA speaker that can take the microphone uh, connection for the wireless mic. So this is another option um, for you if you're just starting out and especially if you're trying to be uh, cost effective. Um, I highly recommend if you're not streaming at all, you give this a try. Give this a try and um, use it while you get more education about what products are available, what you might like to use. There are other products than Sling Studio, but I chose Sling Studio because it was uh, wireless and um, it had less wires on the ground and a greater level of safety. By the way, Sling Studio, they're not sponsoring me, they're not paying me to say this. I'm, I'm just telling you um, because this is how I did it as a, as a beginner. So the cell phone is another great option. So that's how I begin, just a simple cell phone in Facebook. All free to me at the time. I already owned the cell phone, I already had an internet connection, and Facebook didn't cost anything. A great solution. Now, one of the things that uh, happened, I started, I started on, I think it was March 20th, very early on live streaming, and we have a whole library of all of our live streams since then on Facebook. So <clears throat> whenever you live stream, you can always, um, as a default or as an option, it will save the video for permanent viewing afterward. So we, we do that. We, I, would, I would hit on the Facebook um, app that I was um, streaming on, I would just hit save. I'd just punch it and it makes sure it's saved and we kept saving all the videos. Um, and we have a nice large library in history of all of those celebrations. Now, one of the problems with Facebook, um, and there's, there's numerous problems, um, but it's still a good solution um, because it's so affordable. <laughs> Face it, it's, it's, it's free. So um, one of the main problems with it is there's a certain series of iPhone models that will experience difficulties. For some reason, they can see the video but not get the sound. Most iPhones, no problem. But phones made in a certain time period, even as early as a couple of years ago, um, they, they can't hear the audio. Now, somebody discovered if you plug in your headphone jacks, you could hear the audio. And I don't know what's going on with the iPhone with that. Some people reported that still didn't fix it. So there's numerous problems there, and people would get frustrated with the um, audio signal over Facebook and after a while they get exhausted of just looking at silent videos and they give up. And we were at a loss at how to fix this. Um, there's another issue. Um, when you set up Facebook, you want to set it up on your parish page. It's called a page in Facebook, not your personal Facebook account. As a priest, when you get reassigned, all of your account's going to go with you. And unless you're going to turn over your username and password for anybody in the parish behind you, all of that's going to go with you, or you're going to have to delete it. Um, of course, you can download all those things. That's really impractical. But if you just start doing your live streams to the, the, the parish page, it'll save you uh, a lot of heartache later. 
but also you need to register your Facebook as a nonprofit. You can register it under, I think, three different categories, like a church, but make sure you register it under a nonprofit because if you try to activate a donation button, they're going to go through a vetting process of verifying your status with the IRS and all of this. It can take months. I started that about two months ago, three months ago. It still hasn't come through yet. And they want me to get a brand new letter from the IRS qualifying us. They won't accept a letter that's two years old. Um, and so now I'm trying to call the IRS and I can't get through. And, um, you know, the, the IRS literally hangs up on you and tells you to call back. And I've gone round and round and round. So it's a little bit frustrating on some of those levels. So what did we do? I decided to move away from Facebook. YouTube is a great solution if you have a thousand subscribers or more, which most beginners don't and we didn't. You cannot live stream to YouTube unless you have a thousand subscribers. You can only upload your video once it's completed um, and then people can begin to access it. But we really want the live streaming uh, ability so that people at home are connecting with the body of Christ here and there all at the same time. It's quite amazing on Facebook, uh, as the Mass is going on, people will write little messages on the sidebar and they will be saying, peace be with you and um, wishing each other the sign of peace and asking each other for prayers. And Just walk onto our Facebook and you'll see there's lots and lots of activity going on on the chat during, during the Mass as people are obviously engaged and they want to be engaged with others. This is why we want to live stream. We don't want to just put the video out there for viewing later. That's nice. We do that too. But we want the live stream. So our solution was um, we bit the bullet. We decided to cough up the cash and get a year's subscription to Vimeo. Vimeo is another um, product that's out there for videos. It's more for businesses. They have a free version that is extremely limited. It's really only to let you see what it does. It doesn't suffice for anything that we would want to be doing. And to, to have the level of service that we need for our live streaming, it costs about $800 a year. So we invested the money. We went to uh, Vimeo. Let me tell you about it. It's wonderful. What I can do with it, I cannot do with Facebook. I cannot do with YouTube. Not in the same ways. With Vimeo, I can embed the video right into a web page. So now I can, instead of directing people out of our website to Facebook, the link takes them to just another page on our website. On that page, they can, um, they can see the videos, they can see the history, they can also see a little chat box and um, pop it out and still have that if they want it. But here's the big one. I put a donation button on it. The very problem I was having with Facebook, I took it and I put it on our web page, embedded the video, and now, because I control that web page, I can put a donation button on there that goes to our donation portal for online giving. And on the very first Sunday we, we used this, I didn't announce it to everybody. I, I, I was short of time, so I just got it up and running. And the very first test run was a, a Saturday evening. Well, that Saturday evening and that Sunday, we enough people pressed that donation button and made donations, it exceeded the annual cost of our Vimeo subscription on that first use. And we did not even announce it. I did not solicit, I did not bring it up, I did not ask for donations during the Mass, none of that. I just went on about as usual and I was amazed that people saw it and started to respond to it. Um, and, you know, sometimes uh, parishes are different and it takes a while to build that culture. We've been doing online giving since 2004. And we have uh, exceeded $1.3 million in just our online giving over that entire time span. So we had a good number of people already doing online giving. Those aren't the people that press the donate button. It was new people that hadn't been doing it. So I just want to share with you the power of embedding the video into your website 
and being able to control everything around it. Underneath the video, we have uh, a link to our Facebook um, video library that goes all the way back to March. We also have a link to our Vimeo library, the new library that's being built. And we have a link to our copyright information that goes out. And this is a, this is a real time saver. As we started using Vimeo, we also could simulcast. So that means we have the, the live feed, the live stream, going to our Vimeo library and being saved there, going to our website on an embed, going out to Facebook all simultaneously, and we're not having to manage it. Vimeo is managing it automatically for us. We just push a little buttons and say, we want it to go here, here, and here, and boom, off it goes. And, um, and, it's, and it's nice. And um, Vimeo also has what they call events. So you create an event, and it is something that's either a one-time event or reoccurring. So we make a reoccurring event like Daily Mass, and we put the schedule in there, and it comes up and tells you, you know, one hour, you know, 66 minutes to the beginning of the Mass. Um, you know, it, it, it helps the people that are remote understand what's going on, and I'm not having to type in all these settings every single time. They're in the event structure and they automatically feed out. Not only do they feed to Vimeo, those same details will then zoom over to Facebook and be there. So we put a link to our copyright information. We're no longer having to update both videos with, with our licensing information. It gives the link, you hit it, it takes you out to our web page again, a different web page and it shows you all of our licensing for our music. And let's talk about licensing for a quick minute. Licensing is a big deal. To be able to have music in your live stream and be legal, we have to have licensing. This is how the artists get paid. And so what I asked of our musicians that are preparing instrumental music and other music, I said, please, just use OCP. We use Breaking Bread here in the church 95% of the time. And I said, look, let's just stick to the one publisher, use that. Um, OCP, Oregon Catholic Press, uses one license. One license is a licensing uh, organization, and they do more than Breaking Bread. They do a whole bunch of um, music um, publishers that are very, very common in the Catholic Church. And so you can um, use it um, with all kinds of publishing. So I asked, you know, we have OCP here, so we're using OCP, and you have to have three different licenses. The first is to allow you to perform. So when I come to daily Mass, I put on my mask for safety reasons, and I sing a hymn. To sing that hymn and live stream it, I, I have to have licensing to do that and perform that live, if you will. That's one kind of licensing. Then, um, that's just to perform it live. Now, as soon as I turn on the cameras and begin to live stream, now I need to have a second license, a live streaming license. So we paid for that, we got that. And then, if you want to use pre-recorded music, as we intend to do, then you have to buy additional licensing. So what we're going to do with our Sling Studios is our choirs have opted not to perform live um, for their safety and everyone else's. When you sing, you let out a lot of particulates, a lot more, and they travel a lot farther. And you breathe in, especially when you're singing, you breathe in a lot um, uh, more deeply and you're sucking in the air around you. And these particles stay active in the air for up to two hours. But on top of it, if you get all of the congregation singing, now you've got all, all these people singing and you've got these particulates going around. So our choir has decided they're going to record instrumental music for Saturday and Sunday when we have the most people here. And we're going to uh, take that pre-recorded music and cue it up like a DJ to our swing studio. And somebody will be able to fade that music in and out on the house, the church system and feed it right into the live feed so you'll get a really good, strong, nice signal. And um, we don't have hymnals in the pews anyway. And uh, so 
for all these safety reasons, that's how we're doing it. Um, but you've got to have the licensing to perform, to stream, and to use pre-recorded music, um, pre-recorded video. You have to have the proper licensing for all of these things. So it's worth looking into. And if you're using uh, Oregon Catholic Press and one licensing, they make it super, super easy. After you um, publicly disclose your licensing for your videos that you're using, because if you don't, YouTube um, or other, other um, video services could flag you for copyright infringement and silence your video or delete it or ban your account. They can do lots of things. So you, you publicly put on your um, thing, your link that goes right to the copyright information. In addition to that, you go out to one licensing and you record your usage. And um, that's so the artists get paid. Um, so that uh, we do things legally and, and it's fair and just for everybody. And uh, so that's what's going on with licensing. I want to encourage you to go out to Sling Studios website. Um, they have great videos on there. Um, they call it House of Worship, uh, where they show you various churches and how they're using the Sling Studio products. A lot of them have a lot more production. They'll have lights and, and canopies that are up with video images going on during their services. That's not the Catholic way. You know, when we have mass, we're not going to put all those things in here. But pay attention to how they're using the equipment. It's the same. It's the same basic structure. Um, you can learn a lot by how they're doing things, how they set things up, the angles they use, the equipment that they've, um, they've incrementally increased. The videos are good. It's worth checking out. And you can kind of see what the products are and how they're used. Not too long after the pandemic hit, our good bishop, Oscar Solis, he, um, he asked all of the priests to live stream. But he also, a little while after that, encouraged us all to consider continuing the live streams when the pandemic is over so that we can better reach people who are homebound and remote for whatever reasons. Here in Utah, we have a good part of our diocese, which is the whole state, a good part of the diocese is rural. And that, I mean, we have mission churches out there that don't see a priest every week, even every month. And so uh, providing these live streams can help connect these other parishes um, with the Catholic community when because of a priest shortage, we don't have enough priests to be there every single week. And so, um, what does the future hold for this? Well, um, one of the things that you will you may run into and you can look at, and if you can afford to do it, it's a good investment right off the bat, but you can get a more advanced camera that's called a PTZ camera. That stands for Pan, Tilt, and Zoom. And a PTZ camera allows somebody with a joystick remotely, you know, like a controller in your church, like the DJ for the music, um, they can sit there and can control the cameras. And they can zoom in dynamically during the Mass and zoom out. They can pan across the room and they can tilt up and down. And so they can zoom in on the crucifix during communion, for example, and then zoom out and look over at the choir and then move and pan around and maybe um, take a, a, an image of the Madonna that I was at when I first um, started this video. Um, you know, so you're not stuck with just static camera angles during your your broadcast you have the ability to really zoom in and out think of like a sporting event where the big cameras are zooming in on players panning out um, and across the the crowd and getting wide angles and up close shots and all of these things that's what you can do with the PT, ptz camera and with a nice optical zoom um, you're you're pretty much set in a church environment now here in our church, up in the window wells, we have these recessed window wells, um, we could discreetly put some PTZ cameras up there. But if we did this, I would do away with the wireless. I would hard cable it, put the cables inside the wall and under the floor, back to wherever the control um, center will be, and take Wi-Fi out of it. Wi-Fi is great for safety reasons, 
but you have to physically go to the camera and um, turn, turn that stuff on. You also have the unfortunateness is what if your internet goes down um, or um, uh, certain things. You'll, you can't get around those things, but when you hardwire to the camera, it's always more stable and better. But then you have cables all over the ground if you can't put them in the wall. So on a permanent solution, we'll, we'll be looking to do PTZ cameras up in the church here to get a couple different angles and ability, uh, abilities to um, zoom in and out and really do some high quality um, video work. Now, in addition, what if you don't have a, a volunteer to run the controls? Your daily mass and it's the middle of the week, you can take those PTZ cameras and put them at a set zoom just like I did with these static cameras and go with it. No different. It would be the same as we have now. Um, and you're not needing a control person, but the minute you put somebody behind that joystick, they can really, with just a little bit of training, they can really make the video experience much richer and a better experience for the viewer. Our Sling Studio also, um, as you noticed when I showed you how it's, the camera links have, um, they're also a battery. The hub has a battery on it. You can unplug that from electricity altogether. You can take that Sling Studio for other purposes in your parish. And for example, take your youth group on a hike up into the mountains. And you take a few cell phones with you, hook them in, um, link them up to the iPad, and away you go. You've got that hub in a backpack. Um, you don't even see it, and you're just hiking along, and you're doing great video work, having a great time, making memories for the kids, and uh, you can do that. You can even, and you know, this is a lot of fun. I've, I've seen some videos on it. Um, some college campuses were doing some big events and using Sling Studio and zooming in on the crowd and doing all these things, and they also linked up to the iPad a drone and the drone was flying around through the crowd and and it was it was all going out on their live stream so you can see the sling studio is quite versatile but in addition you can take it to the next level you can pl um, plug in an iMac so you're not having to use this um, somebody can sit there and with their mouse click around and bring the different camera angles in they can pull in graphics so you can put on a, a splash logo, you can put on um, still images, um, a slideshow if you want during communion with prayers on them, uh, the lyrics to um, songs if you want to um, include some of your hymns and have the lyrics come up. You can do all kinds of things like that. In addition, feed in more audio, feed in full video clips. So we could have our choir that's not wanting to perform live with everybody come and um, uh, perform on a video feed, um, say just the instrumental, just the pianist or something, playing beautiful music for communion. And um, it's, it's in a video library that we can queue up. And we have our musicians creating that kind of content right now, where we've got an iMac that we've hooked up. That's the next little section. We put a mixer with it so we can control the um, uh, different inputs and things. And we're going to feed that into the live feed, and we're going to start to integrate that as our next stepping stone. So what does all this cost? Well, it's quite affordable in the big scheme when you start looking at what it costs to buy video equipment, audio equipment. You know, it can get quite expensive. This is actually pretty affordable. That was another reason I chose it. Sling Studio with the hub, the battery, the camera links, you know, everything you need to do it, um, cost about $2,200. And then the three cameras I bought, the tripods, a cell phone holder for this camera we're using right now, you know, all the little things, some cables, it probably took us up into the neighborhood of about $3,500. But with that, we have optical zoom, we've got various camera angles, we've got everything I can control, when, I, and that's how I do it. I'm the one-man band right now. I take this little iPad and I can control everything during the liturgy. Um, it's better to have a volunteer. We're, we're starting to train people, um, and that will come in time. And if there's any little technical issue during the liturgy, I can't stop and fix it. But if I accidentally hit a mute button or something and didn't know, and I did that once, there was no sound for the rest of the liturgy. I didn't even know it. A volunteer that's controlling everything would pick up on that and could fix it immediately. Um, 
So um, that's the general neighborhood of, of what we spend. You can spend a lot more on cameras, like the PTZ cameras are even more expensive, just regular camcorders. Um, I bought some affordable cameras in the range of um, $350 up to $600 and we bought four cameras so far because we destroyed one when we dropped that tripod and that was unfortunate. So you wanna um, consider um, what kind of equipment. There are other video systems out there. There are, are plenty of other options, but whatever you choose, remember that optical zoom. That is a big key to quality. Um, it really degrades. You can go out and look at a lot of live streams with churches and you'll be able to tell a lot of times if they're using a a digital zoom when they're when they're zoomed out it's almost immediately you can tell what's going wrong with the image and um, and uh, so you want to make sure really focus in on the optical zoom I want to thank you for hanging in there and going through this video with me um, my goal in making this video was at the prompting of OCP Oregon Catholic Press um, they wanted to share with the priests around the United States a way of doing live stream. This is my way of doing it. There are other ways. Um, I hope I, as I shared some of the, the pitfalls and the little tips and things along the way, it saves you some heartache, it saves you some money, it saves you some time. And um, definitely go out to Facebook if you get a Sling Studio and join the user group. It's a gold mine of people who use Sling Studio and they all help each other. It's a great community. You'll see video footage up there. You'll see little um, uh, photographs of people's mixing boards and their wiring and people helping them troubleshoot um, and, and give them ideas uh, if they're having a technical issue or they're trying to be um, a little bit clever in advancing things. So I just hope this has been an encouragement to you in the Catholic Church, we haven't been very strong in embracing technology and reaching out beyond who comes through our doors. Maybe this pandemic, um, as a, a side benefit, has taught us that we can do this. We might be new at it, but we can do it. And we'll get better and better at it as we go through time. We'll learn more, and we'll be able to reach people beyond our doors. And it means the world to them. I can't tell you how many people, how many parishioners have written me notes, have called me, have come up to me after Mass when we were allowed to let people come back with social distancing and masks. And they've come up and they've expressed their appreciation. Thank you so much for doing those daily Masses. And if you can, if you can live stream every, every Mass you do, that would be the goal. You could do just Sunday, but... If you can do it every day, people are tuning in. I would usually get 15 to 30 people for my daily mass. We're not that big of a parish. We have about 450 active families that come every week, uh, maybe 600 um, you know, to 800 people on the weekend. We're not that big of a, a church. But I, in, in the beginning of the pandemic, um, when, we were, when we had all of our video going to one source, Facebook alone, we would see our daily mass counts between 150 and 250. Our Easter celebrations, we doubled the amount of people that would normally come through our doors watching our live stream. And now they're, they're split between Facebook and Vimeo and there's different counts, you have to put them together, but we still have hundreds of people going to daily mass. People are connecting with their faith. This is precious to them and they really appreciate it, and they've been expressing that. So I hope you're encouraged by that. Um, again, I'm Father John. This is St. Thomas More Catholic Church in Cottonwood Heights, Utah. Be safe, God bless you, and have fun at it. <laughs>